Welcome back. In this video I'll be showing you how I made this portable power system. It's just all DIY, 100 amp hour battery, 1000 watt inverter with some DC outlets on this that can help you power your, your laptop or your mobile phone or even some small power tools, perhaps a fridge or a fan for your off-grid situation. It's not for everybody, there's quite a lot in this build. There's a few things to think about like wire sizes, and uh, c connectors and there are some specialist tools but you can do things relatively simple anyway just to help out i'll put some links down in the description where the parts that you may be interested in so you can go jump to those if you want to this is the lithium battery i'm going to use 12 volt battery 100 amp hours brands are relevant however try and get a good quality battery there's a lot of rip-offs out there so just do your homework on your batteries this particular battery is in a clear case. You can actually see the cells in here and the battery management system. So again, do your homework. The good batteries have a good reputation. Look at the reviews. The bad batteries are really, really cheap and nasty and they won't deliver the capacity that they, they say they have. This is the power inverter I'm going to be using. It converts 12 volts DC to 240 volts AC. It has a continuous power rating of 1000 watts. It can surge to 2,000 watts. It's only momentary, like one or two seconds, but it has to go back to 1,000 watts or less. It can't run at 2,000 watts all the time. Otherwise, it'll turn itself off. It's a pure sine wave inverter, so really good for sensitive electronic equipment and all that sort of stuff. I don't recommend buying the modified wave inverters at all. Here is some of the cabling I've used. I've pulled out of my drawer, but you'll need to get cable sizes and terminal lugs that are rated for the power needs that you have. This is, for example, this wire here, 25 amp wire. You can see that it's quite uh, small there. 25 amps for DC is often adequate for some of the small things like a USB, um, cigarette lighter type stuff, charging, charging a few small portable devices, it's fine. But supplying an inverter, like using a thousand watts, where you're going to need about a hundred amps, you're gonna need some cabling that can handle carrying that amount of electricity. These are some of your connectors. It's called an Anderson plug through here. They're quite accessible, commonly available around the place, electrical stores or eBay or online. And these are MC4 connectors, like they're solar panel type connectors. Um, again, available quite commonly. And uh, so you can just buy these. These are already made. You don't have to do anything. You just buy them and hook, hook up your solar panels. I have some fuses here. <clears throat> these are like circuit breaker type ones that click on and off okay if this is 50 amp DC so if a load exceeds 50 amps this will release and disconnect your system so you need to size your system do your homework if your if your system needs 75 amps you're going to need a circuit breaker that's probably a hundred amps something a bit bigger this is a protection device and it's to stop your wires from actually overheating, melting, and then causing a fire, electrical fire. So they're a safety device. Here I just have a fuse block. So you can just put your fuses into this fuse block and it's like a power distribution. Power comes in, power goes out. Here I have a couple of solar charge controllers. This is a cheaper, much lighter um, pulse width modulating solar charge controller. And this is a much more expensive, I bought it second hand mind you, so relatively cheap, I think I paid $100 for it. Victron, which is a high quality brand, MPPT, multi PowerPoint tracking, 130, so the 100, I don't want to confuse you too much, but just an overview, this gets solar power from the sun, which is DC power and converts it to, to a, a, a voltage and a type of power that your batteries can use to recharge it. So it does all that. 100 volts, it can, it can receive 100 volts of solar and, and it will deliver a maximum of 30 amps of charge. It's a 1224 volt charge controller. Let's have a quick look at this uh, smaller one. This one here has a voltage rating of 12 to 24 volts and will produce a current of 20 amps. It's not, it's not exactly top end but it'll do the job. It'll work. This however is much much heavier it's got these cooling fins on the back it's much it's a much more serious um, device here and, and probably much more expensive you could probably 
these are probably like uh, maybe $150 or thereabouts or more. These ones here are prob probably around about $20 or $30. I have a couple of um, outlets here. This one's for USB. Oh, if I can get this open. This one has the two USB outlets and a little plastic cover. A couple of little connectors on the back. And this one here is just like a cigarette lighter socket outlet so you can plug in whatever devices that have a uh, that style of socket. And here we just have the battery monitor, a cheapie. I think I paid about $80 for it. You don't need to pay a lot of money. It comes with a shunt and that you need a shunt with these. The shunt tells you how many amps that you are using. Lithium, you just have to understand the chemistry is a little bit different from a traditional battery and you just need to manage it through its capacity of used amps. These are my two second hand solar panels, 190 watts each, 36 volts. Together it's going to give me about 380 watts at 72 volts. Now look these were these were fairly cheap, I bought them for 20 bucks and they're going to provide the charging power for the unit. So there are all the basic components but you need somewhere to store them all in so years ago I got this for a birthday present. It's called a Zooka. I'm going to use it to put all the bits and pieces in so I can make this system mobile. It wasn't a cupboard but it's been out in the shed for a little while, it's covered in dust. This carry bag thing, I'll remove it and uh, I'll come up with something that can uh, enclose this battery system inside there. Well, I think I'll give it a bit of a clean up first before I put everything in it. And, it's, and now pretty much it's time to get on with this build here, let's put it together. It's doing a trial fit at the moment just to see how things might fit or not fit. doing a trial fit here on the battery but I put some electrical tape on those uh, battery terminals just to okay. prevent any shorting out if I accidentally drop some spanners or something like that on those terminals. For the inverter that sits in here about about there Oh dear, I'm going to use my milling machine to cut a slot in here. You can use a hacksaw and you can use a file. But I've got a milling machine, I'm going to use it. Go easy on me. Just going to clean that up with the file now. Oh, what have I got in here? A parting tool, that'll do. All right. So I've got these two little spaces here I can use. Oh, they're hot. Okay, so I want this up.
the solar charge controller to put on. Can I put a plate on the back of this trolley here? I've got some of this checkerboard, aluminium checker plate, so I just want to put a couple little bends in it. I'm going to use my homemade bender here that I that I worked up a little while ago. You can see a video, it's in the link right there if you want to see this build. Okay, little gauges and plugs and things now. Excuse the arm, a uh, little injury with a dog yesterday. Um, now I just need to find a space uh, for these components here. So I've got USB and I've got a cigarette lighter outlet and I've got a, a power monitor and Anderson plugs. I thought the clear case battery gives an interesting look so you can see all the components. So. And I had some leftover clear acrylic, 3mm sheet, so I cut that out in the table saw and I'm going to use that to uh, set up the USBs and, and the gauge and I'll just put a bend in it using the heat gun there. Now this can go in there, I can bolt that in and put the parts on. Next is my Anderson plug power outlet, 12 volts. I'm just going to put that up there, drill some holes. And I'll add another Anderson plug just under here for the solar input. So let me just mark that off and drill it. I think I've got all my basic parts in now. Just probably need to lay out my wire and wire everything up, make sure it's all nice and tight, all that sort of stuff, and then give it a test run. Let's wire it up. Oh, I've just realized this is gonna be my power charging inlet and outlet. So the charger I've got is 25 amps. So the, this going through this panel here, the maximum fuse rating I can get is only 20 amps. So uh, I'm going to try and find a place for this breaker here, which is 50 amps. The plug's rated to 50 amps, the charge is 25, and this breaker is 50. So let me find a spot for that. This is the negative terminal of the battery and I need to put a shunt on to measure how much electricity I'm using or putting in. There's no way this is going to bolt straight onto the terminal. I've just got a piece of aluminium here. I'm going to drill a hole in it and create a little bracket and attach the shunt to that and uh, that should do the trick. Just had to run up the shop to get some more lugs and bits and pieces and some more heat shrink too. So. Doing some wiring now, I'm going to wire up the solar charge controller to the battery. I'm using some 8 gauge wire. It's going to get the cable run first, and then I'll do some snipping. Just pull these through to make life easier. Now I'm going to be using these boot lace crimpers in through here, so I'll show you, but I've just got to trim off a little bit of an end. I've got to put this battery connection up for so black to negative and red is positive. Whilst I'm here at the back end I'll hook up one of these Anderson plugs on the back. It uses a different style of connector so they go inside these Anderson plugs 
again it's got to trim off the uh, the right amount not too much not too little I'm using some borrowed hydraulic crimpers here but you can use whatever crimping tools that you've got uh, there's lots of lots of different styles out there and then I'll just put some heat shrink on the ends of those uh, lugs and uh, use the heat gun there and it's done. We've got these little hooks on the ends and they need to slide over the clip that's inside. It's done. I'm just hooking up the breaker for the inverter so the battery positive goes to the breaker. So on the positive terminal of the battery we have the main power cable that feeds the unit with power and also the solar input from the solar charge controller. I've wired up the uh, positive side of the inverter. Now I just want to run and run power to this guy here via that breaker on the other side. That's 50 amps there, the DC outlet. So I want to use some eight gauge wire run from here to the other breaker of the other side. This will be the master breaker. So just using a different style terminal crimp, slides on, it's got the shielding stuff on there. I haven't used this set of crimping tools before but let's just see. Work, or not work, ah, it's kind of on there nice and tight. Okay, let's put this guy on, that'll power this um, distribution block. Time now to run a positive wire from the terminal block over to the USB and cigarette lighter outlet on the other side. Next up, we're gonna run all the negative down to the shunt from all over so we can earth that out. And then I can set up the, um, the battery monitor. Now I just gotta hook up the power supply for the battery monitor and that goes to the shunt. Little terminal block in here. I think we're all done. Last thing I'm going to do is just check everything's all tight. Um, I don't want any loose connectors where it can create a hot spot. So I'll just spend a couple of minutes doing that. Let's turn a few things on here. Now this big brake will power the whole unit. Let's see? The brake on this side here will power the front here and the battery monitors. Let's turn it on. Okay, got power there, power there. Woohoo! Turn on the inverter. That's on. Let's see if it works. If 
550 watt jigsaw. Seven hundred watts. I have a twelve volt pump here, and it's just got the Anderson plug connection. This will just go hot straight away, meaning alive. And put that into the USB. It's charging. So I have this really old spotlight. Uh, using the cigarette lighter outlet, let's see how that goes. That's alright. So that's using 5.2 amps. I'm going to run my metal lathe. It's on. Light off. So that's drawing more than a thousand watts, so it's not going to run the metal lathe. Try and run my dust extraction fan. So I think this is 550 watts. Let's just see. Again, the inverter beeping. That means it won't run that because the surge load's too high. Fan. They're not very much. 150 watts, I think, fans. Sander. What about the bench grinder? Let's have a look here. Nope. Charging my camera batteries is not going to be a problem. Charge, sit it up and let it go. And if I want to shut the whole unit down, I just need to push this button here. And it just sets the breaker off. And zoop, it's gone. It's getting late in the day, but still plenty of sun. Now on this side here, I have the Anderson plug for the solar. So I just got to hook him up. See what happens. Okay, on the back there I've got a bulk light. It means it's on bulk charge. It's a lithium battery, so it's been set up for lithium as well. So we're getting in about four and a half amps at the moment. Far less than I expected. I might try and rearrange that pan a little bit more and see if I can get some more power out of it. Right at the moment I've got those two panels connected in series, giving me about 80 volts. Amps coming in. Is 10.27 and again look at the volts there 13.79 it'll go up to 14.2 I think when it's fully fully topped well it's doing just about everything I needed to do for the time being it's charging a phone it's running a fan it's charging a battery it's running a light it'll it'll run small appliances and and get you out of trouble and it's mobile and uh, it's useful So this machine here is the Blue Eddy AC200 and Blue Eddy have given me this machine for review. I'll be doing that over the next couple of weeks. It's got significantly more upgrades and power ability than the one I have made. Uh, if you're into your DIY um, and have got your, the tools and equipment know-how, something like this is going to be a great project and uh, it's a great little DIY off-grid power system. Uh, charges by using the sun or you can plug it into 240 volt equipment. Anyway, I'm looking forward to using this machine here. Uh, if you just want something straight off the shelf, I'd be recommending something like this, uh, as opposed to probably three days worth of work and chasing bits and pieces for something like this. Hope to see you on the next video, and I'd love to see you in the comments. Talk to you soon. Ciao for now.